every weapon. I woke up Monday morning. I love the voice of the Lord. It is difficult when he speaks at 4 o'clock in the morning and he tells you, write this down. And every time I will say, Lord, I am tired. I'm sound asleep. And he doesn't really care. But I do know this, that if I do not write it down, I will not remember it come morning. And I put it in my phone. All of you know that my entire phone, all under lock and key, erased everything that I had in it. Not by choice and not because I said yes to. It just did. And the Holy Spirit told me, tell them to hard copy all their phone numbers and the things they want off their phone. He told you that last week. If you didn't do it, he's, I'm reminding you one more time. You'll find this out in the future. I know when I'm hearing the Lord because I don't like the message. I go like, oh, Ooh, yum. Is that why it erased everything, Lord? Do you need a description when I said trial run? Okay, Lord, you're right. So Monday morning, I heard the Lord early in the morning, and he woke me up and said, pull out every weapon. I knew he was not meaning the 22, you know. I knew he was not saying, pull out the mace, you know, the tear gas, the, you know, whatever you have as a weapon, the nine mil. I knew exactly what he said. Turned over and wrote it down. So this morning, the message is called Every Weapon. I hope you brought your hard copy. I'm encouraging guys, bring your Bibles I know you have notebooks. You could go from your notebook back into your Bible, but I actually want you to begin to mark the scriptures that God speaks for not only future reference, but when you're off this earth and the coming of the Lord has happened and one of your relatives enter your house or somebody and they grab your Bible, they don't go, well, apparently they didn't like anything. They, they kept it really clean. What did they read? You know what I like is when I got my mama's Bible and I open it and there's color. And you can see, and I'm going to lose these things. Can you grab these, sis? Um, I like frosted, frosted greenery. I could grab my mama's Bible and there was yellow, and sometimes there was pink highlighters, and a whole lot of things scribbled on the side. And I could read her writing and know this is an incredible scripture from the Lord. Or this was given to me when I was going through this really hard time in our lives. And I began to realize this was her compass home. So I borrowed my mama's Bible for an illustration on a, mon on a Mother's Day, and I never gave it back. I still have it. And it is shredded. It is um, her priceless possession. She did not want a new Bible. Don't give me a new one. Give me my old one because I don't want to have to. Everything in my entire life goes from A to Z in this book. Some of you, if you don't have a Bible you have fallen in love with, please let us know and we will purchase one for you. We have many that we give out on a regular basis. This is the hard copy. So as I, go, as I flow today with the Holy Spirit, I'm going on his tail. I told Michael, I'm not stopping. He can flip scriptures up. I have a lot to cover when he said, pull out every weapon. I knew he was talking because I flipped open Jeremiah 51. Whoever reads Jeremiah 51? Nobody. But apparently, God knows exactly what it's, what it's there. And I glanced down at verse 20, and it said, <clears throat> you are my battle axe and weapons of war. I went, oh, 
Got that one. The four o'clock, you speak, and then you take me to Jeremiah 51. Wow. You are my battle axe and weapons of war. For with you will I break in pieces the nations. It's talking about prayer. And with you will I destroy kingdoms. And with you I will break in pieces the horse and the rider. And with you I will break in the pieces of the chariot and his rider. And with you I will break in pieces man and woman. And with you I will break in pieces the old and the young. And with you I will break in pieces the young man and the maiden. I will break in pieces with you the shepherd and his flock. And with you I will break in pieces the husbandman and the yoke of his oxen. And with you I will break in pieces captains and rulers. Okay, God, I got it. With you, with the weapons of my warfare, are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down the strongholds. You can, you can bring everything into alignment. There were numer numerous words this year. I wrote them down. You have them. There's copies of them right here on the front. There is um, four pages of older prophetic words and newer prophetic words. Um, there's the prophetic words from January. When he said, pull out every weapon, I was remembered. He said, trial run. Do you remember? He said, the horses are in the gate. He said, reboot the system. System's going to be rebooted. He said, it's my turn now. He told me it's in the second. I'm like, what's in the second, Lord? I had been praying about the COVID. He said, COVID vaccination. He says, it's in the second. The people rejoice when righteousness rules the nation. A couple weeks ago, he said, I've made a decision. I went, yes. When God makes a decision, it means he's moving on something in your behalf. And this Monday, he said, pull out every weapon. I need to tell you, there is an agenda of the thief. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And if you look at it in the Greek, it, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. It only comes for that reason. It doesn't come to entertain you, to coddle you, or to pacify you. You are not in a church that will make you feel great all the time. You are in a church that will challenge you to grow in Christ. You're in a place where the body of Christ will encourage you and correct you and direct you and show you this is the way you need to walk. We're following the compass all the way home. But there is a strategic agenda of Yahweh. And he said, pull out all the weapons. Literally, the weapons of war include swords, military rifles, includes small darts, big darts, shields, armor, the fort in back of you. Everywhere you go, you're going to find the weapons of war. A battle axe, really? I, I, I don't look at an axe as a weapon, but... Apparently, it was used. 2 Corinthians 10.3 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down all arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Your weapons are not real weapons in the physical, but they will attack the physical. The spiritual weapons will attack what's going on physically. And you will see it. You'll see it in the 99-year-old COVID patient that we prayed for who was dying. And four days later, he's playing cards at the table, and they send me the photo. Isn't that just cool? 
and he's getting stronger and he's eaten. And they know it was Yeshua in his name, Jesus. Ephesians 6, 12 says, For you wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You cannot battle what is going on right now in America. Yes, you must stand up. You must speak. And you may have to join and link physical armor somewhere down the line. But right now, you are in a spiritual warfare for this nation. I have no doubt that he who promised he would keep me in Revelation 3.10, in the hour of testing that is going to come upon the earth, will actually keep me in the hour of testing that will try and come and test every person on the earth. And Danielle's sitting in her log cabin going, God, you said you'd keep me safe. Look in, in, Go look it up in the Amplified. It says he'll keep you safe. Either you believe his word or you don't believe his word. You get to choose. I happen to believe it because he has spoken enough. Why do you think I gave out those prophetic packets? I wanted you to trace. Hmm, has this happened? Is God taking the church into the wilderness? Oh, yeah. He's been getting rid of all the fluff, all the idols. Come away with me. Come to the tent of worship. Seek my face. You can pick apart different messages. Amy gets to hear sermons at least five times. Because she goes home. And she puts on the scriptures. I always tell her she doesn't have to. She always says yes. I told her to make a, car, a copy, a hard copy, and give me some hard copies because the Holy Spirit said, when the coming of the Lord happens, these teachings will actually be in houses, in house churches. And we will preach all the way through the tribulation period. I went, okay. So there is a purpose for what she's doing. When the word is not available, it'll be on screen. She put it up there. Even if I told her, no, it's okay. You can just do it the cheating way. She's like, uh-uh, no. So she listens to a sermon maybe five times. So it's really embedded into her. And it has changed Amy because the word has become life. You get to hear it once, and if you hear live, and then you can go and you can pick up on Facebook Jordan Rivers sermons, and you can hear it again if you need to. So I'm going to go fast, pull out every weapon. The first weapon is prayer. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. When I first began to pray and I would cast out a demonic spirit from somebody, I was afraid slightly. Only, I can't say I was afraid, excuse me. I was bombarded with the word. What if they come after you? After you cast them out. Now I know where the thought came from. It didn't come from me. And immediate Luke, Luke 10, 19, rose in my spirit. And I went, ha, huh, nothing shall by any means harm me. When I quoted that scripture, because I was praying over a woman, a voice came out of her, male voice, very deep, and it said, don't quote that scripture. Quote something from Matthew instead. I laughed. I went, ha. <laughs> And I went, you got to be kidding me. And I immediately said, Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I've been given authority. Authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt me. And it was silent. Why? It knew its time was up. 
And in the name of Jesus, it was cast out. And I can still remember the process. Nick was with me, and we were praying, and it was about 30 minutes, different spirits that had manifested, and the strong man sat in the corner. And she said, he's still there in the corner. After all the others were cast out, and she could give her life to Jesus, and she repented fully and gave her life to Jesus. She said to me, it's still in the corner. I said, really? Still in the corner. Well, we're going after it. He says, you can't. You can't make him leave. I said, well, I can't. But the name of Jesus can. And the power of the blood of the Holy Spirit. And she was set free that day. The next day, I took Pastor Jasta with me. And we went. And uh, the first words out of her mouth were, you didn't tell me what to do when they came back. And I said, well, hmm, you're right, we didn't. She said, but I remembered the blood of Jesus that you used. My husband helped me remember that. And I remembered the name of Jesus. And we told him they couldn't come. And you know what? They hate the blood of Jesus. They do not like that. And they left and they stood in the yard, and we told them they had to go all the way and leave. And they did. Yeah. Behold, I've given you power. Prayer, first weapon. Second weapon, prayer of agreement. I spoke of this recently. The prayer of agreement, Matthew 18, 19 and 20. Again, I say unto you, this is a promise from Jesus, I say unto you that if two of you will agree on earth as touching anything they ask, it shall be done for them of my Father who is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And the Holy Spirit said, tell your people, you've been waiting on some of your kids to get saved. When have you last joined hands with each other and asked together in a prayer of agreement? Father, we come before you according to this prayer. And we agree according to this, that as we ask them, in, ask this in your name, you will accomplish it. We ask that you'd send angels with the right people. Put them in the right place, God. Protect them and keep them. Send people that will minister Jesus to them with the word of God. Surround it. Remove the evil speakers from their life. You begin to go after. If you can do it in a prayer of agreement, he says it shall be done for them. He said, get out that weapon and lay it out before me. Oh, have you been doing it? Well, not really, Lord. I haven't. Nick and I haven't. It's on my list. We just put it out on the table as a weapon. I've gotten sloppy with my weapons. I use the name of Jesus, the word of God, and the blood of Jesus. He goes, when are you using the prayer of agreement? Well, no. Get your tootsies in motion and use it. Yes, Lord. Third weapon, the word of God. Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is alive and active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's able to pierce and divide asunder of the joints and the marrow. Do you realize how thin the blade is? Jasta, what was that? Wasn't it two-edged? They're very precise. They're like surgical instruments. It goes in. It knows exactly where to cut. It knows if I'm, you're ever sitting here and something pierces you and you go, I don't like that word. You just got stabbed with the word of God. For the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. It's the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God knows your thought. He knows your intent. So when you say something wrong, he knows the intent behind it. If you meant no evil... Did you know what? It's not taken as evil. Somebody else might. But God knows your thoughts. 
Fourth weapon, the blood of Jesus, a sure covenant. Because of the shed blood of Jesus, believers are redeemed, sanctified, set apart, cleansed, forgiven, and justified, and you're brought into a right relationship. You have permission now to go directly into the throne room of God and present your requests. Daddy, I'm, I'm bombarding. I'm going right into the door. And I come. My kids do not knock on my door. They just open it and say, Mom, I'm home. They also get into the refrigerator. And they don't say. They might say, is there anything good to eat? Okay. But they immediately go to the fridge and scan it. My kids know they can go to the pantry and scan the pan pantry. Mom, are you planning on anything for these artichokes? No, good. I'm taking those home. You know. I know some of you are going like, Ooh, artichokes? I love artichokes. Love artichoke hearts and black olives and all those Mediterranean flavors. Well, they do too. I should have lied to them when they were little and told them yogurt, Greek yogurt tastes bad. Bad, bad. <laughs> Crab tastes bad, bad. White fish smoked. Oh, no, touch that stuff. Don't touch all the good stuff, you know. I should have told them all those things. And then I wouldn't have had such an expensive grocery list. Mom, can we have coconut fried shrimp? No. Please. You know, you could hear kids that learned good flavors. I learned the flavor of the house of God. And it was good. It was good. And the blood of Jesus was psst, psst. big plus sign, Daddy would say. Why? Because he already tried it out. He wanted to see if there was a weapon that worked. So he'd plead the blood of Jesus on us, and that's why we're alive today instead of being smushed by a semi. I'm, I'm convinced that we're alive because of it. I'm convinced when daddy prayed, it worked. How? Because I remember the man that came to our church 30 years ago. Sat in the back. I saw his face turn into a demonic creature. I didn't know that was a spirit of discernment that had come on me. I didn't know that it was a gift that sometimes operates in people. And I, so I didn't know what that was. Some people would call it... Um, what do they call it now? Sliders or some weird thing where they're they're no they they the person changes form. Shape shifters. That's what they call them now. I just call it demons. Just go to the cut the chase. I saw their eyes turn demonic. Well, they probably had a couple demons and need cast out of them. They made a covenant with the devil. And you begin to see that in people. Why? It's in the media. Hollywood would talk about it. They're actually talking about demonically possessed people. They call them shape, shift, shape shifters. I just call them people that are possessed that need a Jesus deliverance. I look at in the spiritual. I understand the critters. They're under my feet. Behold, I've given you authority to tread on serpents, scorpions, critters. And over all the power of the enemy. It says he's put them under your feet. I don't really like snakes under my feet. I'm not into any type of serpent, just so you know that. If you put a snake near me, it, in fact, out in the church when we first began, there was a couple of these little green things. Yeah, gardener snakes. And a brown one, too. And they came in through the basement, through one of the registers. It was just like, and I walked around the corner. You can hear it. People do that with little mice and traps. I don't like critters. And I don't want them under my feet. But in this case, the emphasis was, if they're small enough to be under your feet, hold them down, take authority over them, don't take offense to this. Cut their head off with the word of God. Pow! You are not coming against my family. If you had to stand on a mouse, 
that became an enemy to your child, you'd take out the mouse. It's a critter. I think of cockroaches. We don't want to go there. But I've been in the South. I have been in the South where I've seen a couple scurry across the floor, and I went like, oh, my goodness. I'm like, oh, Mom, it's just a cockroach. It just came in. It's southern Texas, and it found its way through a door. wasn't in the house. We didn't have any. Everything in the house was spotless. But a little critter came in. If I find a little critter anywhere, it is dead. A spider in northern Michigan, it is dead dead. Nick will take it out for me. <laughs> Nick will take it. Nick will do it. Okay. So the blood of Jesus is a sure covenant. It is most precious. When daddy prayed the blood, things happened. And the gentleman that was sitting there that turned into the demonic came up to him later and said, I just came to church because I wanted to ask you a question. He goes, yes. Why can't I get into your house? What do you mean, why can't I get into your house? Why can't I get into your house? I can get into every house in Boyne City but yours when I astral project. He goes, oh, well, that would be because of the blood of Jesus. You can't get through it. I went, yes. The name of Jesus, your sixth, I think that's your sixth, no, your fifth weapon, weapon. Philippians 10, 9, and 10 says, therefore, Philippians, excuse me, 2, 9, and 10. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth. Do you know who's under the earth? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wow. The name of Jesus. The name of the Lord is a, a high tower and the righteous run into it and they are safe. I hide behind the name of Jesus. You just try to penetrate that. I hide behind the blood of Jesus. You can't penetrate it. And then love. Love is your sixth weapon. If you don't think that's a weapon loving somebody, the greatest of all gifts is love. I have known people that were so broken, they could not find Jesus, except their mom and daddy loved them back to Jesus. We're going to love you in spite of your sin. No, you can't bring your sin into the house and do it here, but we're going to love you. We're going to love you all the way back to heaven. We're going to tell you how much he loves you. He's going to chase you down. We're going to love you in spite of what you're doing. You need to stop praying for me, Mom. Now. I can't. It's in my bloodline. I can't. I can't stop praying. It's there 24 hours a day. I know. I've actually had people tell me that. Are you doing that again? Or am I doing what? I see you mumbling over there in the corner. Are you praying over my kid? I'm blessing their life. <sighs> they give you the look. <sighs> I'm like, you bet. Because there's a calling in their precious. There's a calling on their life. And then praise and worship. There you go. I think that's number seven. In 2 Chronicles 20, the three enemy kings formed an alliance and declared war against the king Jehoshaphat. And the king Jehoshaphat turned to the Lord for help and he encouraged the nation to fast and pray. Ring a bell, guys. The spirit of the Lord came upon them and God gave them the message. Listen, King Jehoshaphat and all that live in Judah and Jerusalem. This is the Lord saying to you, do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. Can I tell you? Do not be discouraged or fearful of what's going on in the government, illegally or legally. Stand for truth, but do not operate out of fear. For the battle is not yours, but God's. I love it. And then he said, I need you to go into battle. And I need you to send out those worshipers. 
and they're to go ahead of time, they're going to break off some things in the spirit realm when they worship and praise. Read the story. And they begin to praise. Oh, the Lord, he is good. He is righteous. He is true. He is faithful and just to me. Oh, God, you are. And all of a sudden, things begin. Never, never, never go up against a worshiper and think you're going to win. Never, never go up a grandmother who is praying for their grandkid and think you're going to win. You should throw yourself on the ground right now and get saved. Give up. Just give up. Just give up. Why? Because you're going to go hell. You're going to go through some hell, and you'll still end up getting saved. You're going to go kicking and screaming, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do this. Uh, don't pray for me, don't pray for me. Just give up and enjoy life from then on. I'm serious. I have seen numerous people, they've been miserable all the way up to their salvation. I stood against it all. And I repent. You're going to see some things come Wednesday night that the Lord said this is what you're going to do. You're going to see some examples, and you're going to go, oh, my goodness, I just watched somebody get born again who came in cocky and said, you ain't convincing me of nothing. Ten minutes later, they're weeping. I want to give my life to the Lord. Why? Because the word of God convicted them, and love won them. It won them. But never go up against a worshiper and think you're going to win. Somebody that knows how to praise. You just try to go up against my daddy, who was a praiser, by the way. He would praise God all the time, even in pain. And he would still be faithful to the word of the Lord all the way to the end. It was on his lips continually. It was weapon number eight. His confession is a weapon. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. What they confessed, they overcame the enemy by their confession. Revelation 12, 11. And if you don't think, number, I think it's nine. Am I in nine or ten? Nine. nine. Witnessing is a weapon. You're going to learn how to witness. You better bring your big boy britches on Wednesday. And your shoes had better be laced. Because I'm throwing you in the middle of a battle, says the Lord. And you're going to learn how to walk in a victory you have never walked in. Because this is something, I'm giving a prophetic word right now. This is something you have not been comfortable with. And you were hoping to avoid it. You were hoping God would never require of you to witness and win somebody to the Jesus, to Jesus. Just let the pastors do it. And God said, I'm playing with the big boys on Wednesday, and you're, I'm going to pull you out of your comfort zone of laziness. And these last moments of this race, you're going to run them victoriously, and you will win souls in your crown. So don't think that you can just get away with it any longer because you were ignorant of how to do it. You will no longer be ignorant, and you will run with great speed and great reward will be yours, says the Lord. I know who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's a powerful destroyer and deceiver. Ha! Nothing, nothing like the power behind the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, and the authority of his word. John 10.10, 10, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I know who is greater. Yeah. Does he, the devil have power? Yeah, he does. Do you have more power in him? Yeah, you do. 
Actually, God has given every believer an arsenal of weapons for the spiritual battles that you're going to face. So you're going to face some stuff, he said, this coming year. And you're going to need these weapons. And you need to be, pull them out of your pocket. These scriptures are not meant for you to sit on, underline, and close your Bible. You better get them way down inside deep. Your faith. Faith is your tenth weapon. We walk by faith, not by sight. You're going to have to have night vision here. So I'm going to require that you put on your night vision goggles that you could walk in faith even when you can't see what's ahead of you. Anybody here have night vision goggles at home? Do they work? They use them, don't they, in the fire department? And you can see with them at night? I think I need some night vision goggles. The Lord said, you're going to be having your night vision goggles on. You will not be able to see like it would be, and you're going to have to go by faith. He also said, the images will heat up around you, so you'll be able to know where they are. Oh, right over there is an enemy. I'm going to take that out with the word of God. Whew. The enemy will think that you're seeing with your little glasses from Vosi glass, eyeglass company. But instead, you're going to have a spiritual night glass that you can see. That's the enemy over there. I'm taking him out. No, I will not fall prey to that critter there. No, that one that's attacking my kid, that is a demon. That is not. That is a demonic spirit attacking his attitude. By the way, just let me tell you this. Have you ever seen rage lift its head through a person? And they would just go, and you could Feel the rage in them. Call it what it is. It's rage. It's a spirit. Immediately take authority over it in the name of Jesus. Oh, by the way, the person does get angry when you do that. What are you doing? I'm taking authority over that in Jesus' name, and I command that spirit of rage to leave you in the name of Jesus. Would you stop praying like that? No, I will not. Why would you call it rage? Because that's what it was. Who? And you could see that on me? Yeah, it was operating. It was coming from the, whether it came from the inside or the outside, it was operating. Your faith, you walk by faith and not by sight. Paul describes faith as a shield for the believers when he says, in addition to this, take up the shield of faith, which with you can extinguish all the fiery darts of the wicked. The shield of faith will protect you, will protect you from the enemy. So faith is a spiritual weapon that clears the way so you can receive God's grace. Let me repeat that again. Faith is a spiritual weapon so you can receive God's grace for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. 1 John 5, 4. Even your faith, it will overcome the world and the things around you. Would you stop talking that positive? Do you, you know what they said to me? Would you just whine a little bit? Would you stop being so joyful? I'm serious about this, guys. I had... Um, some legal people that repeated what some kids said in our house. Well, she just stopped being happy all the time. She needs to get into the real world. That would help if she got into the real world and she could gripe. Well, right along with me. No, she's got to keep on that Jesus thing and smile and always speak the right word. Would you stop it? And I thought, is that a compliment yeah. or a discipline? I thought, I think that's a compliment. When somebody accuses you of being too much like Jesus. Huh. 
In fact, I've heard it said, you are so heavenly minded, you are no spiritually good. Well, you know what? That is true. Sometimes you got to come down. you got to be normal with your kids. But when you had better rise to the occasion when they're underneath a warfare battle. You know what we do? You get this little, it used to be you dialed the phone. You know, you'd let it, and it'd go, little spinner. And you dial it again. It would flip back. you dial the numbers. Your kid will dial you in. Mom? I'm really going through a hard time. You know, this is happening, this is happening. Really what they're saying is, would you get your little prayer thing going and pray for me? They're not going to maybe ask you that if they're not serving God. But that's what they're saying. Do you think, that, like, you could rev that thing up just a little bit? Because I'm going to need some. Your faith is critical to your family. Next we have... <laughs> What is it, 11? The Holy Spirit. A great weapon to pray in the Holy Ghost. For those of you, how many of you pray in your own prayer language, whether it's grunts or groans or whispers or tears, and, and you never get all the words out? And some of you pray in your own prayer language. Some of you don't have one and you need it. What I heard the Holy Spirit say, I just want you to lay your hands on yourself right now and just say, Holy Spirit, fill me with your spirit. I want my own prayer language, and I don't want it to be anybody else's. However you have to do it, I want you to pray through me. I want you filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the gift of praying in tongues. That any time when you don't know how to pray, that will just rise in you. And it will always be according to the will of God. That's a weapon. How do I know that? Because Acts 1.8 says, and you will receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And you'll be my witness in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You will receive power. Actually, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is... It is an extra force of power behind your weapon. Yeah, dunamis power. Like dynamite power. So when I pray in the Holy Ghost, there is power and there is authority behind it. I can whisper it when I'm at work. And nobody even knows it. They're like, what are you mumbling? Oh, I'm just praying. Why? It's effective no matter what sounds coming out. The gift is for you and your children and for all those that are afar off, even those that the name of the Lord shall call. Number 12. The weapon of unity. If I have a couple that's fighting and they're screaming mimes with each other and they are not getting along, surely their house will fall if they're not in unity. If you are in unity and this church remains in unity in one accord, in one place, there's great, great authority, great power, great, great peace and joy. But when I hear bickering from anybody in a family, I think, hmm, what's going on? So our unity in Christ can put, one can put a thousand to flight, and two can put 10,000. Go back to the same scripture that said, if two or more agree on earth as touching anything. Do I need to repeat that? One can put a thousand, two can put 10,000. 
a husband and a wife, a mama and a daughter. The prayer of agreement between two people is more mighty than the prayer singly. But there's only one of me in my family. Then find somebody else to agree with. Pastor, will you agree with me? I don't know. What do you want me to say? Well, will you agree with me in prayer? Tell me what I'm praying over. Then I'll tell you. Some people told me, they said, well, I don't want to tell you. Well, then I ain't agreeing with you. Well, Pastor Daniil, can you, will you read this article? No, that's not the devil. I'm not reading that article with you. Well, I want to go over it with you. No, I'm not. The Holy Spirit said no. Did you know there's sometimes he'll say, don't read that article. Why not? I, don't, I thought that was a good article. No, don't watch that video. Yeah, you're right, Lord. It's a horrible video. Don't watch it. I don't want that in you. There's great darkness out, out there, but you don't need to know every detail of what's going on in the cabal. You don't need to know every detail of what's going on in darkness. I'm going to tell you this goes into darkness. I know just enough, and I put it on the shelf. But I have not gone into it to study or to fill my soul or fill my mind with it or concentrate on it or dream of it. I won't do it. It will not be the topic of my conversation. I will mention stuff to you when I think it's important you need to hear. And there are once in a while I say something too. Last time I ministered, I went on bunny trails. I went great. Now I'm my father. I bunny trailed off. I said, maybe we should just delete the whole sermon because there were some bunny trails. And a few people said, no, no, we like the whole sermon. That was called like four, not four pillars. I don't remember what it was called. Four anchors. I went, oh, okay, fine. Keep it. I'm not bunny trailing today because I don't have time to bunny trail. I'm telling you that if you're in unity in your household, if a, a husband and wife will pray together over something, they'll have it. Big weapons. If you use the name of Jesus, the word of God, pull out the word of God when you go to pray it with your, your husband and wife. Pull out the word of God. Or you do it with your mom. Use the name of Jesus. Okay? Anything you ask the Father in my name. So ask the Father first in the name of Jesus. Use the blood of Jesus. Use the word of God. Get every arsenal out and make a plan. Okay, Lord, let me see. We're in unity. Check that baby off. Uh, I've got the word lined up. We're going to use this scripture. Um, we're going to use that one in Matthew 18, 18, and 19, and 20. Okay. That's the one. Circle it. That's the scripture. I know I'm going to start with the name, the Father, because of this scripture over here. It says that if I ask the Father in his name, whose name? Jesus. Okay, good. I'm going to understand that I have authority over the critters, and I'm going to take my authority. Yeah. And you begin to map out strategically your warfare. I just gave you every weapon. Line them up in the order you need to go and go for it. You want your kids saved? And you better probably, if you ain't got a piece of paper and pencil, you better listen to this again. Write them down. You got 11 weapons. Check off the ones you're in. I'm in unity, God. 12 weapons. I'm in unity. Okay, this is the scripture I'm using. I'm going to invoke the name of Jesus, pray to the Father in Jesus' name according to this, and I get it. Okay, and then I'm going to I'm gonna do this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm, I've got faith, and I'm going to believe, and I'm not going to give up until I see the result. All the way to the end. I don't want to pray that long, passion in you. You don't understand. Nancy, if you had just quit on year 48, Pete wouldn't be sitting here. How many of you guys are going to pray for 50 years for the man you love? No, I'm quitting on year 12. I'm sorry. Too long. I prayed once. Do I have to keep praying? I don't want to keep praying. No. 
And then finally, weapon number 13. And it says in Ephesians 6, verse 10, and finally, that means I'm concluding this sermon. Yeah, right. <laughs> Trick. Fake news. And finally, my brethren, he's talking to the believer. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. His might, not your might, not the government's might, nobody's might, but his might. And be strong in it. That means do not be a weenie. So you're going to get the Daniil version. Be strong in the Lord and not a weenie. In the power of his might, not your might. It's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. His spirit is going to complete this and put a seal on it. <laughs> put on the whole armor of God. I don't want it. it takes too long to read this scripture when I go to prayer. Put on the whole armor of God before you go into this prayer. Why? Couldn't I just do it? Yes, there are times I just do it quick. And you're not going to catch me putting on my whole armor. It's still there from last week. I never took it off. I do not take my armor on and off as I go to bed at night. I'm going to take my helmet off, salvation off? No, sleep in it. I don't know, but I might get a crink in my neck. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the trickery of the devil. They call it the wiles. I call it against the fake news of the devil. You know, you can't do this to them. You need to really... Oh, do you think you're going to get this sermon done by noon? You might have to cut it into two pieces. No, no, I, I don't think. If you teach them this and it don't work, they might kick you out. Please, really? Of course it works. Are you kidding? It's the word of God. It's alive. It's health. It's healing to all your flesh. Well, it didn't work the first time I do it. Then do it again. Twice in one week? I don't care. I don't care how long you have to pray and believe till your kid knocks on the door and says, Mom, can I come back to Jesus? Mom, are you still praying for me? Yes, I never stopped. Good. Mom, there's stuff going on in my life. Can you tell me how, how to pray? I can, honey. Why? I've been praying it and practice for so long. Are you kidding me? I like this. That's okay. We'll read that one too. Pray at all times on every occasion in every season. Hmm. Even on the holidays. In the spirit. With all manner of praying and entreat. Entreatly? Entreaty. To that end, keep alert and watch with strong purpose and perseverance, interceding in behalf of all the saints. That means God's consecrated people. Go ahead. And in conclusion, be strong in the Lord and be empowered through our union with him. Ooh, I'm in unity with him. Draw your strength from him, that strength which is his boundless might provides. Put on God's whole armor, the armor of the heavy armed soldier which God supplies, that you may be able to that you may be able successfully to stand against all the strategies and deceits of the devil. Yeah, I like that. For you wrestle not against flesh and blood, nor against principality and power, nor against rulers and wickedness in high places. Mm. Wow. Look at that scripture. Look at that scripture. In this present darkness against the spirit forces of wickedness in, heavenly, in the heavenly sphere. You're not wrestling in this flesh. You're going to war with something that's being 
done in the heavenlies. And stand therefore, having girded your loin with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shot your feet feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith, which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication and prayer for all the saints. You have got your rear end covered by the glory of God. I say it like this. God's covering your butt. Don't know if that's proper. I know I said the word dung the other day. Actually, I said crap. And I thought, oh. When God has your rear end, that's what the scripture said. That the glory of the Lord is your rear guard. It means it's covering your hind quarters and your hiney. It's standing in back of you as a guard. So you do not have to look over your shoulder to find out who's coming up in back of you to stab you. I one time watched a commercial and it came on TV and I... I don't know what it was. Psycho. It was a year, many years ago. I can still remember the commercial because I saw a sword coming or a knife coming through a shower curtain. Now, when I just said that, nobody better go home and have any vision of that. I could not shake that for years. When I got in the shower, I was always looking over my backside for one visual image. What I didn't realize is that when I got in the sh shower, the Holy Spirit came and stood in back of me. Oh, God, I didn't want you to see me naked. <laughs> Are you kidding me? He knows all the dimples and pimples on your whole body. He knows your weight, every hair of your head. And he loves you. And the Holy Spirit goes with you, so he is my rear guard in the shower. And I didn't need to look over my shoulder to see if the commercial was coming to pass. Because the Holy Spirit said, bring it on. You touch this girl, I'll kill you. Sorry there. I know I said that last week. Most of you didn't know who Ackman was. It's from a... Um, a ventriloquist that has a terrorist dummy, and his name is And what happens is the few times you've seen him, he says, always says this in his, in his little, um, yeah, when he's talking. He says things like, shut up, I'll kill you. When I look at the Holy Spirit, he just says, devil, shut up. I'll kill you. You touch that girl. You come near her. I take you out. Do you know what it's like to go to sleep at night and actually sleep? Because the spirit of God stands beside your bed and says, you come after that girl. You come after Charlotte. You come after Sherry. You mess with them, you mess with me. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Then when I sleep, the presence of God covers me. Don't just go to sleep to sleep. Go to sleep. Prepare your sleep as much as you do when you take a shower in the morning. I got up and put deodorant on. Did you go to sleep and put the word of God on? Well, not really. I was kind of tired. I just hit the bed running. Prepare for sleep that it is sweet. And understand that God has your back end. The glory of the Lord is your rear guard. And the presence of God goes before you. And the blood of Jesus covers you. And the angels of the Lord encompass round about you. Well, okay. It means all those that worship. Okay, God. I got it. I've got some things in my life. Some of you today came today. You have some things you want answers for. And God said, I just gave you 
the list of weapons. Now line them up. I want you to use every one of them in the prayer. You're going to pray. Well, I'm in unity. Find somebody to agree with in unity. This is buzzing. Find somebody in unity that you can pray with. I don't have anybody in my home. All right. If it's not going to take me four hours, I'll pray with you in unity. I'll hook you up with a deacon that knows the word of God and will come in agreement with you. I'll hook you in with somebody that can agree with you in prayer and believe for you. Did you know when Jasta was believing for her kids, she did not pick just anybody. She gave a bracelet to me, and she gave a bracelet to Marge. And she said, I'm picking two people to come into agreement. If you can't come into agreement, give them back. <laughs> she didn't say it like that, but it's really what she meant. If you can't come into agreement, then shut up. I need somebody that's going to agree that I'm going to live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. I'm going to need somebody that can agree with me that my household will be saved. If you're married and you have a husband that will come into agreement with you, that's the best. If you don't, you find somebody. Lay out your strategy and get it in place, which you're believing God for. And in the meantime, understand God might have you praying for a nation. He might have you praying for um, uh, a person in the government. He might have you praying for the fake government or the real government or who knows the government. God may have you on your knees going, God, I don't understand this, but what you got me doing? I've got you doing this and this and this. You have every weapon if you wrote it down. He said, pull out all of them. So some of you today, I hear the Spirit of God saying, you're not filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but you've desired it. He's going to fill you and give you your own prayer language. Why? Because that is a weapon. When you don't know how to pray, it can come up in groanings when you pray. You ever had a kid go to prison? You ever have a kid, you go into court and you know they're going to jail. And the only cry that comes out of you is a groan and a weeping that has no words. It's called intercession. That's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Some of you say, I don't have words when I pray. I have groans. I have sounds that don't have origin. I feel it so deeply within me, and there's nothing to say. And I weep before God, and it comes out. And he says, it's called intercession. That's the Holy Spirit within you. It makes utterances that cannot, cannot have words. It makes sounds in prayer. How do I know you need him? You need every weapon you can. When the Holy Spirit says, tell your people, pull out every weapon, there's a reason for it. I don't know the reason. I don't know your position. I don't know what you're in. But I know I hear God. So, Father, even right now, I thank you. The word of God, the word of the Lord has gone forth. And I know it has pierced the hearts here every person we have come together corporately in your name to worship you and to hear the word of the lord for today and for tomorrow and for next week for this word continues it's alive with power we will apply it to our life faithfully and god i thank you in advance saving all of our kids being the provision for our homes and lives. You said you'd keep us safe. 
<clears throat> in this hour that comes upon the whole earth to try it. You said, Father, I could ask anything in your name, and you would do it. You said if two or more of us agree in prayers, touching anything we ask, we can have it. So, Father, not only do I believe it's done, I'm going to take these scriptures, apply them to my life. And God, I ask every person here, this message would not leave them. It would follow them every day day of the week they would begin to strategically lay out a plan and call on the name of the lord to deliver them their household and this nation in the name of yeshua in the name of yeshua jesus of nazareth be it done be it done amen Amen. Amen.